Hello, all you beautiful souls out there. This is Destiny, and today I have to talk to you on the platform of Life is Beautiful. And I'm going to speak to you because this is a message that I got yesterday when I was out into nature. And I don't know if many of you all watch my videos or you all have receive uh, posts and articles that I have written and posted on Facebook, then you know that I am a tree hugger. You know that I talk to trees. So that should not be rocket science. You know what I'm saying? That should not be a surprise to you. I talk about trees all the time. I'm always, you see me out into nature. Now, I had to learn this through a very hard experience because when I was going through some major things that was happening in my life. My health had become ill. I was not feeling good. I had gone into a place at one time of depression. Now this is probably about three years ago, two and a half years ago. And uh, during the process of all of that awakening to my higher self and, my, and the spiritual calling to the place where I am now, Making that transition from the life that I have lived my entire life and then learning about the creator God of the universe and then understanding from that point, you know, it was a hard thing because everybody that I was familiar with and they were familiar with me, we grew up together, we went to church together, we fellowship together and all my family members and all that, you know, we grew up together in the same house. But when I became to awaken to my greater higher self, and I'm beginning to see, yes, we call him God, but God could be anything, and I tell you that. You can create God out of your money, your children, your clothes, your fashion, your purse, your shoes, your car. Anything can be a God, but we were taught in our Christianity about God, so we want to give him a name. But he created this whole entire universe. And I don't know why I'm getting off on like this. But anyway, if you want to go back and look at some of my videos way back, you know, I'm always talking about nature. And I love to get out to nature as often, as much as I can. So yesterday, make this story short, I went out to nature as I always do. And I have this tree. I have this very specific tree that I made. Well, I made a connection with in the past almost 10 months, I say. But before that tree, before I became attached to trees back in 2018, I was going through, see, I was still going through that part of my life where I was being sick. I was going through depression. I had made this transition from one place all across the country to another location there was no family here and the people that i did know back there we became separated because i became as they say totally different from where what uh, they were believing and talking but we were all talking about the same god we was all all talking about the same creator people use different names but we give reverence and respect to the God of this universe, the creator. And people can call him their divine source, their higher source, their energy source. You can call him your infinite intelligence. You can call him God. You can call him Buddha. You can call him Brahma. You can call him Jehovah Witness or Roman Catholic. Or you can call him your bank account. You can call him your children, your grandchildren, my husband, my spouse. Oh, you can call him your house. Anything that you give your most focus on, your full attention, it becomes a God. And let me get back on the subject about this tree because I have to say this. Well, during that point, when I, when I made that transition, I fell into a deeper depression because I had to start my life all over again. I had nobody to talk to me. I had no friends out here. Friends that I didn't know, they associated with, they withdrew themselves and they just, just almost like cut me off. Just hate them. Family members are like, they backed up because, you know, mom and daddy, you know, they always talk this and that because my parents, they were pastors and I grew up in the church. I was a preacher, people. 
I used to be up in the pulpit in the church. I used to preach down. I could I, I could preach from the pulpit to the back door and all the way around the church. And I knew that Bible from front to the back. And I could just walk that floor. I didn't need a Bible. But it's nothing wrong with what I'm saying with the Bible. It's that how we were taught. And I'm not going into that. We'll get into that another subject, okay? But the tree. The tree that I had last year, my neighborhood and my community, the tree that I felt being drawn to that pulled me out when I was at my lowest state of my life. I was like, I was dying. I was like lifeless. I, I was breathless. I had no energy, no power, no strength. Drew me out toward this tree. And he kept telling me to touch that tree. I could hear the voice within. We all know the voice that's within us, that God consciousness that speaks within us. Touch the tree, Desmond. You can hold the tree. Just put your feet on the tree. Take your shoes off. Take your socks off. And I was like looking around like, oh, people going to think I'm crazy, you know, because that's what I felt. So I would go up to the tree and I would just like look at it and I was, I was scared. So I was like, no, because I ain't want people labeling me because I'm still at that point where I have not grown to my greater, higher self, my authentic self right now. I don't care what you think about me because I know my greatness. I know my power. I know who I am. No man own me, no thing own me. I am my own self created in the image and likeness of divine creator God. So I don't need nobody to define me. I don't need nobody to give me their approval or their permission for anything. I know me because I've learned that when I learned to love who I am, who the creator created to me to be. And during my own spiritual awakening, during that process, that's when I found me, when he separated me from everything, people, family, and all that. And sometimes he has to get us into that lone place. He has to get us all the way from things and people, distractions, all kinds of programs, false programs, so he can deal with us. He can pull us all apart and put us back together again. That's what he wants to do. He wants to change our lives and remold us and make us because that's what he already have done. In the beginning of the foundation of the earth, he created us in his likeness. That's what Genesis said in chapter 1. In his, he created us in his likeness and in his image. But man got so far away from that. Now, man don't give the reverence and respect and the honor to the creator who created him. He blew his breath into him and he breathed life in him. He became God, God consciousness. Anyway, when I got to that point where I was like, I thought I was dying, seriously. He kept saying, go to the tree. I would go for a brief moment, look around, see who looking at me. Touch the tree, hold the tree, just tell the tree, just talk to the tree. I was standing for a brief moment and I run back. I would stay away for a couple of days, wouldn't go back again. Found me, he would pull me back out there. And it took him several, several times. And each time I began to feel more comfortable and more comfortable as I get closer to the tree. And I wasn't looking around so much then as to see who was watching me. And then maybe, maybe about a month or so later, I just felt like I'm going on my own. And I got out there and I lost all the programming, all the ego, and all, all the things that I was allowed to keep me in that place of fear. That place where I feel like people are watching over me, they're going to discredit me, they're going to label me as crazy and stupid. It didn't matter at that point now. I knew that my health was failing and I was at a place of total sickness. I grabbed to that tree. I said about a month later, I don't care who was looking. I put my arms around and the moment I touched that tree, I felt heartbeat. Now, you got to know your own truth. Now, this is my story, so I, I can't tell yours. I'm going to tell you what I felt. I felt a, a ticky, a pull, a power. And as I put my hand there, I was like, I felt my old life, that dried up life, that dying up part of me. I felt like it was just leaving my body. And I would start feeling more energized and I start feeling more wholesome and healthy. So I will come back probably every other day now. I'm getting comfortable. And finally, I'm just out there every day. I'm talking to the tree now. I'm laying up against the tree. I'm hugging the tree. I, I go out there and I meditate with the tree. My arms are wrapped around me. 
I get out there and I speak my affirmations and I ask the tree, I know you're connected to the divine source of this of this universe, the higher power God. I said, send the energy that I need. And everything that I go out there and touch that tree for, I have received it. Let me talk about this tree. Now that was like what two and a half years ago, right? Okay, yesterday I was going out there to my tree. And I, I used to go out there and say, hey tree, how you doing today? And I look at him and I'm like, ooh, look at you, you're drying up. Let me, let me brush your, you know, the bark off of you, whatever, pick little uh, weeds or little branches, little dried up things. And I would do things. I'm like, what, you looking good? I said, so how you doing, tree? He said, I can feel, I'm saying, I'm not saying he came out and spoke to me like I'm speaking to you on this platform or you talking to, to somebody who's in the area, in the room with you. I can hear that inner voice that spoke within. You, you've got to know the inner voice. But there is an inner voice within every one of us. Our gut intuition, it will talk. That's why they always say, let your conscience be your guide. So, guys, we got to start deprogramming the lies and things that we've been told to keep us from our growing into our higher, greater self. He created us in his likeness and image so we can have life, so we can live a wholesome, healthy, and a beautiful life. And he gave us everything that we needed out into nature. If you read and study that Bible, go to Genesis, first book in the Bible, chapter 1, verse 29. 29 tells us the diet that he gave for man to eat. It's, it's out into nature. Verse 30, verse chapter 1 to 30 tells us the, the diet that he gave for the animals. But what happened to the food? The foods are out there, but the people in this society and all the manufacturers and producers goes out there and get the wholesome, healthy foods out of nature, goes back into their manufacturers and, and they process it with drugs and chemicals and GMOs and put all kinds of additives and food colorings and dye and, dye and all those things. And that is the chemicals that is killing us. Okay, let me go. But anyway, yesterday I was out there to the tree. And I, I, and I was talking to him. I said, wow, you look beautiful today. I said, tell me something good. And I felt the tree saying, oh, I, I'm, I'm great. He said, I am. want you to know something. Because, no, I asked him. I said, I need a message. Something I can talk about today. What can I get a message? Talk about a tree. I'm like, talk about a tree, yeah. Tell them the importance of trees. And he said, tell them all about what trees can do. Because see, people see me out there. They see you coming out here almost every day. And they see you standing up on a tree, talking to a tree, probably hugging a tree. So just, just let them know what all that means. He said, the value of the trees. I said, look how much value. And people, sh they shun the tree. They they look down at the tree, and when somebody's talking about they're hugging a tree or talking about the tree and all those things, but those trees produces and it gives so much things to this whole entire world. You could take tree, like the tree said, the tree, it makes paper. So we get all kinds of paper supplies, our toilet paper, napkins, and paper we write on, our tablet papers, little things like that. He said, you know, money comes from trees. That's paper. I was like, wow. He said, look at the furniture you're sitting on, the desk, the, all the stools and all the benches and all the wood furniture. He said, that come from trees. And I said, yes, you're right. That's right. He said, there is so much in a tree. And he's, the tree went on and said, we allow the creatures out into nature come and make their homes in us. We give them a place of comfort and shelter. We give people a place where they can be shielded from the sun so the shade of the trees will not let the sun beat down onto them so hot. And I was like, yeah, so much. It was so much. And it just kept going on and on and on. He said, trees are valuable, but people don't know the value of trees. So, let me tell you some facts about trees so I can get out of here right quick. I'm not going to hold you up. I'm going to tell you some benefits of trees. Okay? And this is some benefits of trees. Now, trees, they combat the climate change, like the excess carbon dioxide, the CO2. It's building up in our atmosphere, contributing to the climate change. The trees, what the trees do, they absorb the carbon dioxide, removing it and restoring it while releasing the oxygen back into the air. And that's why you're breathing. Because that 
tree. And number two, trees clean the air. Trees absorb the odors and the pollutant gases, the uh, nitrogen oxides, the ammonia, the sulfur dioxide, and all those kind of ozone things. And, and they filter those things, you know, trapping them in their leaves and their bark, and they cleanse that nature. You know, for those trees, we'd be in a really bad polluted, polluted world. Number three, trees can provide oxygen. And one year, an acre of mature trees can provide enough oxygen for 18 people. Now, you don't tell me that trees are not important. Number four, trees cool the streets in the city. You know, the average temperature in a in, in house can be like, what, maybe 6 Fahrenheit, you know, whatever, you know. But what that tree does, it's, it, it, it insulates that house. It cools it down by shading our homes in the streets and and it breaking the urban heat islands and releasing water so it can give us that release, okay? Number five, trees, are um, they can conserve energy. And what, that's what trees do. The trees, they place a, a strategy, what's it saying, you know, like around a single house or home that you're living in. And it's cutting in to where you don't have to use so much of your air conditioner. You can cut back on your air conditioner if you got trees around. And they reduce the energy demand for cooling their houses and stuff like that, you know? And they reduce the, the, the carbon dioxide as well and other pollutions and things. And number six, trees can save water. And you know they, how they shade it um, from the tree that the um, that slows water. It does that because it evaporated from the thirsty lungs. But trees do, it saves water. And number seven, trees help prevent water pollution. Because these trees that reduce that runoff from breaking the rainfalls, you know, it allows the water to flow down the trunk into the earth. So below the tree, and this prevents the, the, um, the what's called the storm, the storm water from carrying the pollutants out into the ocean. Because it takes it down into the ground, it protects us. When the motions of the trees that act like a sponge, it soaks it into the earth. Number eight, trees act, I think, um, number eight is trees help prevent soil erosion. And... That's on the hillsides and things where you find the, the things, that, well, the trees, they can't often slow run off and they can hold the soil into this place. Number nine, the trees shield children from ultra rays because they give you that, that beautiful shade over your heads and they protect, you know, from getting all kinds of um, UVB exposure and everything from, from the violent rays of the sun. And number 10, trees provide food. We can get all kinds of food, nuts, berries, seeds, fruits, vegetables. All oh, that's out there into in, in nature, guys. Wholesome, healthy, natural foods. Number 11, trees heal. And the study has shown that patients with views of trees out of their windows, are, they heal faster and with less complications. So we all got to think about it next time. Exposure to trees in nature, it aids the concentration by producing mental fatigue. Number 12, trees, uh, they reduce violence. The neighborhoods, homes that barren and have shown to have greater uh, incidence of violent rays and stuff around their home other than the greener counterparts. Well, the trees, there is like a landscaping that helps us to reduce the level of that fear. Number 13, the trees mark the season. They know when it's winter, spring, summer, and fall. They look at all the different shades that the trees are changing. Number 14, trees, they create economical opportunities like they are uh, Fruit harvesting from the community, all the orchards, they can be sold there and, and providing them with income and everything. It just gives us a small business opportunity in the green uh, waste management. So it, it, it gives us opportunity to have jobs because the, the fruits and the things that grow on the trees, nuts and all that. Fifteen, trees are teachers and playmates, whether as houses for children or creative and spiritual or creating a spiritual kind of inspiration for adults, the trees also have that space of human retreatment throughout all ages of life. You just got to get to get beyond your thinking that people are saying you're crazy. Number 16 trees bring diverse groups of people together because when you go out there, like, like on Earth Day, you be planting trees in our neighborhood. So you bring the whole community together. All kinds of ages, genders, they have an important role to play at tree planting. Or a tree care event. Number 17, trees add unity again. Like I said, trees as a landmark can give neighborhood a new identity and encourage civic private 
And number 18, trees provide a canopy of habitat for wild animals. Look at the squirrels, look at the birds, or all that. It gives them a place where they can live. The possums, the bees, and the squirrels. I mean, all those things. Both any insects, the caterpillars, you know, all that. They, they go to the tree for a habitat, a life. 19, trees block things. Trees can mask like country walls and parking lots and and uh, un unslightly views and stuff like that. And they muffle sounds nearby streets and freeways and they create this, this eye soothing canopy of green. And trees absorb that dust and that wind that produce that, that reduce that kind of glare. Number 20, trees provide food in suburbs and their rural areas and trees can be selected, harvested, or fused and crafted for wood because that's where you're making your furniture from. You tell you 21 trees it increase property value because a lot of places when you got more trees in the neighborhood that beauty of a, a well planted uh, property is surrounding streets and neighborhood that property value is going to go up at least 15 percent more because of those beautiful trees and the, and this, one, this last one 22 will be trees can increase business traffic because the studies show that more trees and landscaping a business district has that the more business that will flow into that into that area because a tree line street will also it will slow down the traffic enough to allow the driver to look at the storefronts that way you're like okay i can't go too fast all the trees blah, blah. so you slow down now you can see all these things so tr trees bring in business traffic so the merchants even make money. And so that's that's a lot of things that trees can do. And, and there are so many products that we can make from trees, you know. I mean, coffee, toilet paper, tissues, uh, cosmetics. The list is endless, guys. But you know what? If you don't remember anything else, hugging trees is good for your health. Hugging trees is good for your health. If you're looking to reduce the stress of city life, then you escape to the forest and you get out there and start talking to trees. Because modern society creates a lot of stress in our lives, which is why more and more people, they are turning to the gifts of nature for therapy, like tree hugging, talking to the trees. Though many still associate tree hugging with a hippie kind of lifestyle, or, or hugging a tree can be good for your health. It is good for your health. So you just have to let people like, oh, you, you a hippie, you crazy? No, the bad creator. He created everything out of the, the, the heart of this earth. You are part of that creation. You came out of that. That tree is a part of you. That tree knows everything about your life. That tree knows your ancestry. It has a library of all the stories, all of our ancestors. That tree is very important. Guys, and hugging a tree increases the level of oxygen. That This uh, hormone is responsible for uh, feeling that calm and that emotion bonding. So when you're hugging a tree, the hormones, you know, serotonin, it, it, it just makes this dope thing that makes you so happy and joyful. And that's where I, that's how my body got healed and restored. When I was at my lower level, almost thought I was stepping over the death. I became sick, ill, weak. I did not know. But and when I finally got over my being ashamed that people don't laugh at me because I was out there talking to a tree or leaning against a tree and hugging. When I put all the people out of my head, when I felt that first little movement, that little vibration, I knew that was something. And I got my healing. My, my whole health was totally began to change. And my whole entire wholesome health came back into that place where the creator wanted to be. So it's important to use this free space of forest that we were given to a natural and holistic way to heal our bodies and our cells. So guys, there is so much. You can go uh, forest bathing, bathing out, out there in, in, in the forest. You can talk to trees. You can talk to yourself. Then people always say, talking to yourself is crazy. No, talk to yourself as well. Get out there. That tree, talk to yourself. Self-talk will allow us to freely express our most inner feelings and our thoughts. So the next time you want to take a stroll in the forest, then don't forget to shout. Don't forget to go out there and cry and laugh and feel all the all this, all this at the same time. It's okay. I do it. I, I take my frustrations. I take my anxieties. I take <laughs> the cares that, that seem to push me into a dark place. I said, I got to get out into nature. I stop everything and I run out there to my tree. And I said, I need you right now. And, and I can 
feel like we, we're so connected. Take off your shoes. Put your feet up against the, 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 the bark of the tree, the root of the tree. Put your arms here and just hold it there. And I can feel life storing. When I leave that tree, I am totally in a healthy, wholesome, and healthy place. My body is totally, absolutely feeling great. So the next time you want to take a stroll in the forest or out there into Mother Nature, don't forget, it is okay. I mean, I know what you may feel. That person is crazy. They're stupid. They, I, I was told that. I was. They, they laughed at me. They made fun of me. They, they did everything they possibly can. And that's what made me so afraid to take that daring step. Even I knew I would be pulled by the divine creator, God himself, because he said, I can restore that soul. I can lead you in a path of health and wholesome healing. If you just touch the heart of the earth through that tree, I will heal you. Like I said, I was stubborn. I didn't do it right away. I would go right in and touch it and peep around and kept looking and see somebody coming and see somebody and I'd run back up to the house and wait another three, four, maybe a week later and go back out there and I try again. I kept doing it, doing it for about a month and finally my health was declining more and more and I'm getting more and more weaker and I come home and I couldn't even stand up. I would fall on the floor at the front door, couldn't even make it into my bedroom to lay down and I realized what I got to lose. Because right now, it looks like I'm losing my life. And I went out there to the trees. And I started hugging it. And then the mark didn't bother me no more. I don't care what you think. Because I know my Redeemer, he lives and he lives in me. Because he's calling me to that place where I can be restored. Because he promised me that he'll restore my soul. He promised me wholesome health and a, and a wholesome lifestyle. He promised me. He said, everything that I have, I have it already prepared for you. Because everything he created, he created before he created man. Go back and read Genesis chapter 1, you guys, you Bible scholars out there. I'm out of here. Just don't forget, there's so much to trees. And tree, I got it off my chest. Because you kept telling me today, you didn't do what I told you to do. I kept feeling him. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. You didn't see it. You didn't even put it out there by the trees. You didn't say anything about the trees. You didn't say anything. And I don't want to be disobedient because I don't want to lose that relationship that I have. I don't want to lose this power that I know that the creator God has put in me to be my greater, higher self. By being disobedient, we lose things. We lose our health. We lose our life. We lose a lot of things and we become at a place now of lack. We just lose stuff. So people, I'm out here and guess what? I will be seeing you around. Did you all get what I said? Did that make sense to you all? Did it make sense? It makes sense to me. Like I said, it may not be something you could you'll do right away. Because I didn't. Like I said, it took me almost over a month. But now it's just home. Being up under the trees is home. It's where I find my greater, higher self. It's where I find my help. It's where I find my healing. It's where I find my peace. It's where I find my God, my, my goddess side of me, my wholesome healthy side of me. So guys, I'm going to say this, no matter here, hugging trees is good for your health. Hugging trees, it increases the level, I say, of the hormone oxygen in you, and this, it, it just restores you. Tree hugging is, is, is all right. Getting out to nature is all right. And one day, we'll talk about those grounding in the sand, in the rocks, in the gravel, in the grass. Get your feet into the grass, in the rocks, that will be the next video, if the, if the, unless he changes it. So in the meantime, trees provide a whole lot of benefits. You can go through a whole list of benefits and tell you all the things that is made out of trees. All the way down, nothing is left. They even take the pulp and they make it into coffee grounds and different things like that. So there's so much value. So stop abusing the trees. They love you. They want you healed and whole. Guys, I'll see you at the next video. Like this beautiful platform, beautiful souls. I will see you at next time. Don't forget, subscribe to Destiny channel. Destiny Forever Walks, my YouTube channel. Hit that like button. That look, that, that, yeah, thumbs up. Hit it, hit it, hit it, Destiny. And if you want to get more uh, videos and to know when Destiny is making a new one, just hit the bell notification. Comment, comment, just tell me what you think. I don't care. I'll read it. I'll read it. 
Everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their truth. But you got to know your truth because it's the truth that's going to make you free. I don't care how afraid you are. Do it afraid. And you will come out of that, that place of fear and that place of worrying what people think. Because you're going to find a greater, higher power within you. And you're going to find your wholesome, totally complete self. When you start lining yourself up with the divine creator of this universe, God. I will see you at the next video. I will see you at the next video. Whether it's your house or mine. Namaste. Tree hugging. See that book up there? Talk to the trees. Tree, I did it. Destiny did it. I got that off me. I feel so obedience is better than sacrifice. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. And guys, namaste. That only means I bowed to the divine within you.